This is the Siemens Intelliarc Diagnostic Tool, and as an electrician, the amount of useful information that this thing gives me and the amount of time that it could potentially save me while I'm troubleshooting is pretty incredible. Now, as a full disclaimer, Siemens did send me this for the purposes of this review, but everything that I'm going to share in this video are my own thoughts and my own opinions. So the purpose of the Intelliarc is to help a qualified person identify and diagnose problems on branch circuits. Problems that would typically cause an AFCI, a GFCI, or even just a standard circuit breaker to trip. Now, nuisance tripping is really annoying, but when circuit breakers trip because of an actual arc fault, a ground fault, or an overcurrent condition, then that is very welcome. We want that because if the circuit breaker doesn't trip and there is an actual potentially dangerous condition present, that breaker tripping can save your energized loads, it could save your property, or even potentially save your life. Now, the issue is that in certain situations, it can be difficult to pinpoint exactly what's causing the circuit breaker to trip. Is it a faulty breaker? Is there an issue with the wiring? Is something plugged in that's causing the tripping condition? So that's where the Siemens Intelliarc comes into play. And I want to explain how you can use this thing out in the field to troubleshoot faster and to solve problems smarter. Now, the Intelliarc can either be installed at the panel or it can simply be plugged directly into a receptacle. Either of these options will allow you to analyze circuit conditions and there's also a spot on the side of the unit that allows you to plug things directly into the Intelliarc itself. It can even run off of a 9 volt battery so that you can do some troubleshooting without being connected to power. And as a quick disclaimer, if you do install this in your panel, please make sure that you are first qualified to do so, second, wearing the proper PPE, and third, following the installation instructions laid out by Siemens in their user manual. And they actually do have instructions available in the form of 3D modeling to make learning how to use and install this thing very straightforward. And I think that's a pretty underrated feature all in itself. So the way it works is by using your phone's display via Bluetooth to show you everything that you need to know about the circuit that you're analyzing. And I should mention that I've spent a lot of time troubleshooting with this thing and the Bluetooth range has never been an issue for me even if I'm upstairs on the complete other end of my house and the Intelliarc is installed down in my garage in my panel. Now, once you're all connected, the main dashboard is going to give you a ton of information about the particular circuit that you're analyzing. First, you can see the circuit's voltage. Then you have peak current and current. Now, current is gonna show you the average current that is continuously updated up and down and peak current shows you the highest peaks of the current sine wave continuously updated up and down. And if at any point the current of the circuit exceeds the value of the circuit breaker, then that is considered an overcurrent and that will cause the circuit breaker to trip. And of course, it is really nice to be able to see the amperage in real time. Next, you have the RF noise level of the circuit. And a high level of RF noise can be a pretty strong indicator that there might be an arc fault present somewhere. And so the Intelliarc tells you how you can actually interpret these different levels of RF noise directly in the app, which is super useful. Now, if you aren't aware of what an arc fault is, let me quickly explain. So the two most common types of arc faults are series and parallel. A series arc fault occurs when there is a break or a loose connection in a single conductor, usually the hot wire. And this break or loose connection creates an electrical arc across the gap, which can lead to heating and potential ignition of surrounding materials. Now this can occur for many different reasons, and some, for example, might be either damaged or frayed extension cords or power cables, corrosion or oxidation at wire splices or terminations, vibration or physical impact causing connections to become loose over time, and so on. Now, a parallel arc typically generates even more heat than a series arc, and those occur when there is an unintended electrical connection between either the hot and neutral conductors, or even between the hot and the ground. And typically this would be due to situations where there are nicks on the hot and neutral, that those wires are close enough for an electrical arc to intermittently jump between those two wires. These can occur when nails, screws, or other fasteners accidentally penetrate through wires that are inside the wall, or even when wire insulation is damaged by rodents. Some other causes can be overheating at connections, improper spices or terminations of wires, physical impact or abrasion wearing down wire insulation, and so on. 
The point is that these situations can be very dangerous and potentially cause electrical fires. And the identifying characteristic of an arc fault present in a circuit is actually a high level of RF noise. So that's why being able to detect a high level of RF noise is very important. The next two sections are things that if there was an issue present, it would actually cause a GFCI to trip. Now the first of those two is the ground to neutral section which will have a green circle when everything is wired correctly. If there is a ground to neutral fault though, whether that be due to incorrect wiring or internal damage to something that's being plugged in, the circle will be red and it won't turn green again until the issue is fixed. And as I mentioned, a ground to neutral fault will in fact cause a GFCI to trip. Now the way that a GFCI works is by analyzing the current on the hot and neutral wires. And if for any reason there's an imbalance of current between those two wires, generally in the range of four milliamps and above, then the GFCI will trip. And that's exactly what this next section is showing you here. The difference in the current between the hot and neutral, which is also sometimes referred to as leakage current. And the last section at the bottom will give you alerts depending on what you have the IntelliArc set to alert you about, which I'll touch on here in a little bit. Now the default state of the dashboard is set to normal, and that means that all of the numbers and information that you're seeing will be updating in real time. Now there's actually two other modes that you can select on your dashboard, and the first of those two is peak hold. Now if you're experienced with multimeters and other types of testing equipment, then you already know that this mode will show you every peak value during the current session. So in other words, if there's a momentary spike of current, RF noise or whatever it is that you're checking for, then the dashboard numbers will update to the highest value that it has detected so far since you started this mode. And if at any point those values exceed the previous highs, then they will update again to reflect and show you those new highest peak values. This is incredibly valuable for detecting those quick momentary spikes that you otherwise may not have been able to detect or notice in the normal mode. And if you want to reset those values, then you can just press clear. The last mode on the dashboard is called retrieve trip event. And honestly, Siemens, well done. Seriously, this is just incredible. So let me explain. What happens if you're out on a service call and you're trying to troubleshoot something that only happens every once in a while, and you can't get the fault condition to happen while you're actually observing? Has anybody else been in that situation? I know that I definitely have. So if there's an intermittent fault of some sort that's causing the circuit breaker to trip, then you can actually put the IntelliArc in a logging mode by pressing the blue button on the side twice quickly in a row, and then install it to the circuit that is intermittently tripping. What this does is it makes it so that whenever the circuit breaker eventually does trip again, the IntelliArc will store the data that I analyzed just moments before the circuit breaker tripped, and it's gonna store the data that actually hopefully caused the circuit breaker to trip in the first place. And so when you open up the IntelliArc app after the fault event took place, you can then set the dashboard to retrieve tripped event. You gotta select that mode. And then the dashboard will show you every reading that it took right before that trip event occurred. So are you seeing why this is so valuable? If there was a sudden spike in currents, then you'll know that that's what caused the circuit breaker to trip. If there was a ground to neutral fault all of a sudden, then you'll know that that's what caused the GFCI or the GFCI breaker to trip. And if there's a sudden spike in RF noise, then you'll now have evidence that there is something very characteristic of an arc fault taking place that is causing the AFCI breaker to trip. Knowing information like this might lead you to find out that the customer was plugging something in right at that time or even using appliance that created the fault condition. And again, remember that if your readings are suggesting this, then you can actually plug things directly into the side of the IntelliArc and see whether or not that thing was causing the issue. Now I wanna skip ahead to the record tab and show you another thing that's really cool about the readings that you got when your IntelliArc was in logging mode. Now, if you select new record, retrieve trip event as your capture mode, and then you hit record, it will actually show you a graphical representation of the information that it gathered from the tripping event. And this is especially useful for analyzing RF waveforms because sometimes certain circumstances can create a high level of RF noise that isn't actually an arc fault. And by analyzing the actual RF waveforms, you might actually learn that the RF noise was actually just from an LED light 
or from a microwave or some other sort of appliance. And then once you have this data, you can make some notes about it, save it, and then you can even send it directly to a semen specialist to have them analyze the data for you. And I also want to mention that you can take a recording manually too by selecting manual capture as your capture mode instead of retrieve trip event. Any graphs in the record tab will show you 320 milliseconds worth of data. So essentially just a very quick snapshot. The other tab that's very helpful is the live data tab. And this is basically just a live graph that shows you the load current, the line voltage, and the RF noise of the circuit. Now, you can also save your recordings here too, just like in the record tab, but the difference is it will only save 40 milliseconds worth of data as opposed to 320 milliseconds worth of data in the record tab. All right, so in the more tab, you'll find important things like the user manual, that 3D tutorial that I was talking about, a section where you can update the firmware version, a place where you can actually set the IntelliArc to alert you if it detects certain parameters that you set, and a place where you can view those alerts that it created based off of those parameters that you set. And if all the things that this can do sounds kind of overwhelming, then you definitely do want to check out that 3D tutorial that's in the More tab, because it does an incredible job of showing you step by step how to use this. Now, all in all, this is an incredible tool for troubleshooting by Siemens. And there really seems to be no limit to the different ways that this can be used out in the field to ultimately make your whole job a lot easier as an electrician. If you have any questions about the Siemens IntelliArc, please let me know down in the comments and make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this from me in the future. Thanks so much for watching and have a good one. Thank you.